The other day, another YouTuber by the name TechLead made a video about why React Native is garbage. And what I wanted to do in this video was respond to that. As someone who has used React Native a lot and has been following its development, I have some responses to what he said. Now, I don't think me and TechLead actually disagree on this, and that's why I wanna clarify some of his points. I don't think he actually thinks React Native as a whole is garbage. I think there's a particular use case that is not as good as some of the other use cases, and that's really what I wanna talk about and go through. So I'm gonna be just going through some of his points and responding to them. So my first issue with React Native, and really any hybrid framework, is that even though they promise that you only have to write the application code once and then you can share like 95% of it across iOS and Android, what happens is you're probably still writing native code in iOS or Android, plus you're supporting this third framework, React Native or whatever else that's gonna be. So TechLead uses Airbnb as an example there. And many of the problems that Airbnb ran into when they were using React Native was because they were using it in a hybrid fashion. And what I mean by that is they had an existing iOS app they had an existing Android app. And what they did is they slapped React Native in there and started using that as well. So then they're trying to support three platforms just like TechLead describes. Now that's not the only way you can use React Native. You can also start a new project from scratch and have React Native be the base and what you structured off. And this is where you can get 95% code sharing between iOS and Android because the majority of it is written in React Native. Now, one of the things TechLead says is he doesn't see many companies actually do this, where they are putting 95% of their code in React Native. But usually what we see is maybe 15% of the app only is written in React Native or so. I thought this was kind of a weird point. The reason why a lot of companies only use React Native and say 15% of their application is because they already have an existing iOS slash Android app and they invested in that. And it's super expensive to just rewrite the entire thing in React Native. So that's why we're seeing them incrementally adopt it. And then when they're starting a new project and there's no technical debt for it or previous code that they've written, then that's where they're choosing not to do it with iOS slash Android and they're considering React Native. Now you may be thinking, well, sure, maybe you'll just write the whole app in React Native. But if you take a look at even Facebook, they're not doing that. In fact, I believe only Marketplace is written in React Native and there hasn't been too much adoption outside of that. I haven't worked at Facebook, so I don't have any firsthand knowledge of where they are and where they're not using React Native. But I saw this tweet by Brent from the Expo team, and he said Facebook is using React Native for more than just Marketplace. So for example, they're using it in the dating app and also in Ads Manager and Oculus. And the Facebook app for dating is very recent. So that's a place where Facebook could have chose not to use React Native if they didn't feel like it was a good fit. But bad performance is one of the reasons why tech lead believes companies are not building their entire app in React Native. And you know, one of the primary reasons is because of performance. So if you take a look, code start performance, which is the time it takes for React Native to load on the first start of the app, it's not that fast. So because of that startup performance hit, you don't really want to be using React Native on your start screen, which is an issue that Airbnb encountered in their blog post. So slower initial load time in React Native apps is definitely a thing. But the React Native article that he references was written a couple years ago, and since then there has been some improvements. So one of the main things that slows things down at the beginning is a large JavaScript bundle. And so there is RAM bundles and inline requires that you can do now. And this basically allows you to lazy load your code, so you don't have to basically load the entire bundle at runtime. Also on the Android side of things, it used to be particularly slow, and Hermes is a new JavaScript engine that Facebook created that was specifically made to improve startup times, decrease memory usage, and just produce a smaller app size. Besides initial app load time, Techly doesn't mention just general performance of React Native when you're, say, transitioning pages or just using the app normally. And this is something that came up in the comments, so I thought I would touch on it because this is something Airbnb mentioned in their article and they found the performance with React Native to be very close to native. So this is from the Airbnb article and they said, one of the largest concerns around React Native was its performance. However, in practice, this was rarely a problem. Most of our React Native screens feel as fluid as our native ones. And I would say the majority of apps are doing something similar or less complex than Airbnb in their apps or in their UIs. 
If you're not doing anything crazy and the majority of the time you're just rendering text and images, which if you think about it is really the majority of apps, then React Native's performance should be fine for you as well. With that said, there's definitely going to be some times where React Native's performance is not going to be good enough. This is from the Shopify article where they talked about transitioning to React Native, and they said they're still going to be using Native in some circumstances and not using React Native. And one of those circumstances is when they need ultra high performance. Beyond that, the app market is incredibly competitive and you really want to put your best foot forward, especially if your competitors are also shipping native apps and you're shipping like a hybrid app, then I'm not sure if it's going to be a good long-term position. If React Native's performance is okay for your app, I would actually say it's a competitive advantage to use it. Because you're using a single code base, your team's able to move a lot faster and build out features and fix bugs faster than your competitor. Now, there's also another interesting reason issues with hiring. So this was mentioned in the Airbnb blog post, but a lot of mobile developers, they're either iOS or Android developers, and they don't really want to branch out of that and start learning React Native and become like a React Native developer or a Flutter developer or some other framework developer. So I actually found this a little bit funny. Airbnb actually mentioned that iOS and Android developers were not reaching out or wanting to join their team as much because they thought they were using React Native 100%. And this is really just a non-problem if you're using React Native in your entire app. Yeah, if you're a company and you use iOS, Android, and React Native, I guess you may run into this where developers are not applying to your job because they think you're all React Native. But in general, this is a straight non-problem if you're just using React Native as your main platform. And what I will say about React Native in regards to hiring and just the ecosystem in general is it has a very unique attribute. Because React Native is built on top of or utilizes React, a React developer can very quickly get up to speed with React Native and be very familiar with it and start being very productive very fast with it. But overall, I would say it could just be simplest to hire two development teams, one for iOS and one for Android. If you take a look at WhatsApp, they scale to 900 million users with only 50 engineers. Okay, if we're talking about simplicity, it is going to be simpler to hire one team than it is to hire two teams. Now, anytime there's a cross-platform framework, it's easy to start reading through their beautiful website, check out their videos, their demos, their tutorials, and everything looks great. And it's hard to find fault with that. What happens is usually though that they overpromise and underdeliver. I 100% agree here. I don't want you to get the wrong idea here that I think React Native is a perfect framework. It has a ton of warts for sure. There's definitely a lot of spots which could be improved upon. Uh, but really this is a lot of frameworks, right? The toy examples look really great. And when you actually start using it in a real project, you find out, wow, it actually has a lot of areas where it is a little bit awkward. So you're putting your app in someone else's control and then you have to wait for them to update it, especially when there are new platform features like say light mode and dark mode. On Android, you've got foldable screens. A while back with iPhone 10, you had safe areas. And a lot of these features aren't going to be supported out of the gate. So I haven't followed the new features of Android and iOS closely enough to know how long it actually took for React Native to implement them. So I was kind of curious. So I looked up one of them for safe area view. And this was something I believe that became a thing with the iPhone X, which came out in November 3rd, 2017. And if we look at the releases for React Native, we'll see they introduced safe area view in this giant release. And this giant release happened in October. So October 11th, 2017. So if we come back, that's about 15 days, maybe 20 days before it actually released. So you could say that they didn't give enough time for you to actually add this to your app before it was released, but React Native did get it in time at least before it was launched. I was too lazy to look up the other features, so I don't know if React Native was slower to implement them, uh, but either way, this is definitely a downside, right? We have to rely on React Native or React Native team to implement this. But for the most part, this is usually not a deal breaker in general. And then we've seen some other companies continue to support React Native like Walmart, Discord, Microsoft. So I think that there are some usage cases, but I wanted to present the case against it and why I think for many people, I don't think it's going to be a great user scenario. This was something TechLead said at the beginning of his video, and it's the main thing that I disagree with. Yes, if you have an existing iOS slash Android app, and yes, if you need ultra performance, React Native may not be the right fit. It's harder to justify it there. But if you're starting a new app and you're not doing anything too crazy, which I would say is most apps, then React Native can be a really good fit. 
And that's where you can write your code once and share like 95% of it between platforms. And it can save you a ton of time and be a huge benefit. And that's when I really recommend taking a look at React Native and considering it for your next project.